Friday video. Yes. Drinking video. Of course. The original series of Tomb Raider games aren't exactly paragons of realism, what with all the yetis you, the main character, shoot to death. Amusingly though, according to official in-game canon, the first iteration of Lara Croft was well aware of how dumb her adventures were, and as a result, actively refused to talk about them to the press. So it's a drinking video? Yes it is. Where is your drink? Well there's a bucket of beer here, so I'm going to pick one up. This is Desperado, it's the beer we're drinking today, and Brad, you've gone out into the house today and found an object for me to open this beer with like I did last week. So last week we went for difficult, we, yeah. we did a cricket ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See last week's video for that this one. This week I've gone for flair. Okay. So I've brought with me a little uh, plastic toy Eevee. <laughs> Pass that shit here. Eevee is going to headbutt this fucking... Oh god, I'm really sorry Eevee, you might not have a face by the end of this one. <laughs> use you know the... what, I'll use the yeah, feet. I was going to say use the bottom. Yeah, I'm going to use the bottom. So this is a little plastic Eevee. Let's look at the camera. And I'm going to open a fucking beer with it. No trickery involved, just... Hey, well, that was a lot easier. That was actually much easier than the ball. Thanks Eevee. Ah. <sighs> Most people nowadays are probably more familiar with the Uncharted style gritty reboot of Lara Croft. They are, yes. Yeah. So we're not actually, we're talking about though, the original mainline series, Triangle Titted Lara Croft. There we go. <laughs> I was waiting for that. We're talking about like, we're talking about like all polygon tits herself. Like that version of Lara Croft like in the mainline season. People who maybe didn't play those games or have just forgotten how stupid they were. Those games were all kinds of ridiculous. Like, so to get us, like to jump off, for a start, in those games, Lara Croft discovers both the Ark of the Covenant and the Spear of Destiny, aka the spear that pierced the side of Jesus Christ, meaning that in the original Lara Croft timeline universe, Jesus was real and so were the people who killed him. And fun fact about the Ark of the Covenant, if you don't remember discovering it in those games, it's actually in Lara's front fucking room from the very first game in the series as a, as a homage to um, Indiana Jones, which inspired parts of it. Meaning, Lara Croft uses the Ark of the Covenant as a fucking doorstop. That as well doesn't really sell Lara Croft in those games as like, you know, an archaeologist because she stole it and put it in her house. But that's not even scratching the surface of what Lara Croft discovers in these games. No. There's fucking dinosaurs. Yeah, they're just the relic she's found like you can put a list down below of all like the crazy ass relics she finds throughout those series of games but yeah Lara Croft fights dinosaurs in the Congo she shoots yetis she meets mummies ancient spirits demigods a dragon <laughs> like there's even what like if you think like okay that's all crazy bullshit but we're not we're not done yet because as well there's one game in the series where original Lara Croft goes to Area 51 and can backflip over an alien corpse, meaning in that universe, not only is like, you know, like virtually every religion like correct because all of their ancient, like, you know, mythical artifacts are real and have the powers associated with them, aliens are also real. In that universe, what the fuck do history books look like? Like, cr because creationists are kind of right, because the Bible literally happens, like, in that universe, but also dinosaurs? It's probably a good thing then that they rebooted it so they could ground it a bit more in reality for people. You say that, but, like, in the reboots, Lara Croft just, like, machine guns hundreds of people to death. Yes, Lara Croft in those original games gets a cigar on and commits tiger genocide all up in that bitch, but Lara Croft in the reboots is a horrific inhuman monster because you get bonus points for headshots. Like, you get bonus points for shooting people in the knee and finishing them off with, like, um, uh, special kills. One of the upgrades in Rise of the Tomb Raider is to perform a special shotgun execution and Lara just runs up, puts the shotgun in their face while screaming and just pulls the trigger. It's like, she's an archaeologist. What the fuck is this? The best way to sum it up is in the first like, of the reboot games for Tomb Raider. The first thing Lara Croft kills is a deer with a bow and arrow and it shows you a cutscene of her crying as she kills the deer. Five minutes later, you're getting bonus experience for headshotting real people. <laughs>
And by the end of the game, you're performing like Far Cry Blood Dragon-esque chain kills on groups of enemies who you are just like slaughtering without mercy using various skills you've learned by just like endlessly killing deer for experience points. It's crazy. The reboot games are good, but because you've not played them, you're probably not aware of the fact there are numerous horrifically detailed death scenes for Lara Croft that are weirdly sexualized. Like there are loads of death like scenes, like really graphic ones like she's getting killed by traps, but the camera for some reason always lingers on her for longer than it needs to and she always lets out this weird sex moan. <laughs> So like, we've got this in all the games, like uh, my favorite, like uh, in Resident Evil 4, every time Leon Kennedy dies, his last thing is, as he just falls over. But for some reason, it's like Lara Croft just makes like a really sexual type moan every time she dies as the camera lingers on her as the life drains from her body. And it's like, why is this in the game? <laughs> you spend so much time humanizing her and making like you want to like this character and then you just show her like get horrifically killed by like a button prompt you couldn't see coming. So back to the original Lara Croft. Yes. All these things she sees and discovers, are they like known facts in her universe or is she actually the first one to discover them? She's usually the first one to discover them unless she's like, you know, being chased off following like some shady, like, you know, agency that's trying to like get to them before she is. But yeah, Lara Croft is largely credited with discovering all of these, like, you know, mythical world changing things. And you'd think like, surely in her universe, she is like, one of the most famous people of all time. She has proven definitively stuff like there is life after death, mummies are real, I shot a Yeti once, dinosaurs are still alive, also there's UFOs and aliens in Area 51, also I found the Spear of Destiny definitively proving that like, you know, the Judeo-Christian way of like, you know, like religion is completely 100% correct to the way it's written in the Bible. But no, because according to an official biography written by the people who made those games, they say Lara Croft actively distances herself from all of these discoveries and denies that any of them occurred when the press comments on it. I, I mean, to be honest, I'd assume that's because she's been followed by like uh, groups of people condemning the actions of her just running through these like landscapes, shooting everything and breaking it's all like, these temples. Like, Lara, can you comment on the fact you re-extincted the dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> Lara, can you comment on the fact we just found this like thousand year old tomb and within just an hour you'd collapse, the, you'd destroy the entire thing and shot up the wall. So, can you respond to comment that you were spotted in the tomb of Tutankhamun doing sick backflip combos on his corpse? Lara, and can we ask you why you've got a cupboard in your house? full of like 500 secret skulls. <laughs> Can you tell us why the Ark of the fucking Covenant is holding your bathroom door open? Yeah, it's established in that biography that she never acknowledges that she's like found any of this stuff, like you know, to keep it secret from it falling into the wrong hands, which doesn't really make sense when she's got the Ark of the Covenant in her front room or whatever. And that like, the press obviously get wind of it and there are a lot of unofficial Lara Croft biographies talking about all this crazy bullshit she's done that she actively goes out of her way to silence and distance herself from using like her vast, tremendous wealth to sue the fuck out of people who talk about it even though it's all 100% true because we as players know she did this stuff. Wait, so in this universe she accomplishes all this stuff and not quietly, I might add. Yeah. And yet she tries to lie about it and say it never happened. Yeah, um, there's, a, there's a quote you better put down from like the official biography written by the people who made those games. They just say, the only thing that Lara will ever say when asked by the press in the rare interview she ever gives, or like by people who write these unofficial biographies of her life, is that they are utter rot and there is no truth to them whatsoever, which we know now is a huge fucking lie. It's like, Lara, you've still got Yeti wounds. You're covered in them. You can't lie about this stuff. You rediscovered and then re-extincted the dinosaurs. You lived through Jurassic Park and Independence Day in the same week. So the title of this video mentions Bigfoot, mm -hmm. but 
I, I've played through the games. I remember her killing Yetis, but I don't remember her ever killing actual Bigfoot. That's because she doesn't encounter Bigfoot in any of those games. She encounters him before the games take place because there is a cutscene in the very first game in the series where someone throws Lara Croft a magazine that says on the front of it, like, Lara stamps out Bigfoot. And obviously we as like players both see it and go, oh, that's just like, you know, people exaggerating her adventures because he's the first game in the series. But... But think for a moment about all the stuff we've already talked about Lara discovering over the course of the games that we as players definitively know happened, such as encountering dinosaurs, dragons, aliens, mummies and ghosts. Isn't it plausible that she also, before the events of the first game, encountered, and then according to this magazine, which we know now from the official biography from the people who made the games, Lara would distance herself from and deny ever occurring, encountered and then shot Bigfoot. Because <laughs> we know for a fact she genocided all those yetis. That means from the moment you take control of Lara in that very first game, you're already playing as a person who's beaten up Bigfoot. And to close off, Brad, do you want to know something I find hilarious? about those original Lara Croft Tomb Raider games. Go on. According to that official biography written by the makers of the games, Lara Croft is a hero to cryptozoologists and conspiracy theorists. Why is that funny? Because they're still called cryptozoologists and conspiracy theorists, aka mental people who don't know what they're talking about, in a universe where we, the player, definitively know the things they believe in are true. Because remember, like a cryptozoologist, like, oh yeah, I believe in cryptids, like the word for like, creatures that don't exist. Like Bigfoot, Yetis, dragons exist in that universe. Ghosts are real. Like conspiracy theories, like, oh yeah, there's UFOs and aliens in like Area 51. Oh, that's a conspiracy theory. No, it's not. That's real. That's fact. That's, that's reality in that universe. Because we saw it. I backflipped over the UFO that's in Area 51 while I was there. They're not conspiracy theories. They're people who know the truth and are actively having that information suppressed by the person who discovered it. That's, what, that's amazing, isn't it? Like in that universe, Lara Croft is a hero to conspiracy theorists, even though the things they believe in are a conspiracy, they're real, because we saw them. Oh man, video games are one of those mediums that are really like, they really struggle to sort of dance between the line of, let's make this realistic, and this is a video game. Yeah, and as well, I think like a lot of the mechanics of video games sometimes let down the more fantastical elements they introduce. It's like in that um, Assassin's Creed Origins where you're in Egypt, I think Anubis is just a wandering enemy in that game. And he's like, oh, it's a glitch. It's like, okay, so it's Anubis, like the Egyptian god of death exists, but why has he got a level? Why has Anubis got a life path? <laughs> It's like, why can I defeat Anubis in hand-to-hand -hand combat? It's like in a lot of Final Fantasy games where usually the last enemy is just God. It's like, why has God got a life bar? Why can I just like physically punch God? It's like in Final Fantasy VII. At the end of Final Fantasy VII, you fight Sephiroth. And his ultimate, ultimate attack is Supernova, where he summons a meteor that destroys every planet in the solar system that hits the sun and makes the sun explode. And then the sun comes out and hits your characters and it does like 3000 damage. It's like, wow. So my guy who is a soldier with a big sword and is like his mate who runs an inn who punches things and this other guy who's a dog, they can survive the sun itself exploding in their face and only take half damage because they're wearing a ribbon around their arm. <laughs> It's fucking great. I love video games so much. Have you got any favourite examples of like some ridiculously powerful entity in a video game who you can just beast on without any effort? I always found it funny how in Metal Gear Solid 2, yes. Raiden, uh, the, like the audience spends the entire game making fun of Raiden. Yeah. And at the end, if you're on the hardest difficulty, he has to kill 25 Metal Gears. And he does it as well. Like, carnically, he killed 25 of them, and then he beats the President of the United States in a sword fight, and then he beats up a vampire, and then it's like, and he beats a Harrier. <laughs> Raiden beats a Harrier jump jet in a fight with a gun. He beats a jet. And then, like, you're like, we've talked about it before, we're going to talk about it again. You fast forward to Metal Gear Revengeance, and you're like, the jobber enemy in that game is Metal Gear Ray. The first enemy you fight is Metal Gear Ray. It's so stupid. Metal Gear has also got the inverse of this. Like, in Metal Gear Solid 3, where you fight through all these people who've got, like, weird... Like, you know, pseudo mystical powers, like a guy who controls bees, a guy who can fly and has like the control of a fire, like an immortal sniper man who controls the power of the sun. 
and then like a guy can turn invisible and your final boss fight is just a woman who's really good at punching. It's like, yes, I love that shit. Because she's just a woman who's really good at punching. And she's so tough. That's the same in every Metal Gear game. The final boss is always just, man, I punch for a while. Yeah, oh, man, like Metal, the Gear, yeah, Metal the first... Gear Solid 4, yeah. where the final, final fight, after you're doing robo-laser combos to another Metal Gear, is two old men having a fist fight. <laughs> two old men just wailing on each other. And you have to, like, you've got to force them to get back to their feet so they can keep on hitting each other. But then you again, you have, like, Metal Gear Revengeance. After you beat Excelsius, you fuck up a giant robot spider, your final fight is against the US Senator. <laughs> you just gotta punch him. <laughs> oh man. Oh, okay, so fucking good. That final Zandatsu you do against Armstrong is just the fucking best. 